In this lesson, we will answer the question, how many roots can a polynomial have? To start, we'll look at even degree polynomials. Hopefully you're familiar with what the graph of a quadratic function, which is called a parabola, looks like. It has this U shape. Remember, we can picture roots graphically as the points where the plot crosses the X axis. These are the values of X that correspond to Y equals zero. With that in mind, what are the possible numbers of roots a quadratic could have? Well, start by looking at this graph. It's a plot of y equals x squared plus 1. Since the low point of the u-shaped parabola is higher than the x-axis, the quadratic will have zero roots. If the parabola moves down a bit so that its low point just touches the x-axis at one point, like in this plot of y equals x squared, then the quadratic will have one root. We say the parabola is tangent to the x-axis at this point. Finally, if the low point of the parabola sits below the x-axis, like in this graph of y equals x squared minus 1, then the parabola will cross the x-axis at two points, meaning that the quadratic has two roots. Notice that in these examples, all the parabolas have no more than one turn, where the direction of the plot changes. The point of this analysis was to show that a quadratic function, which is of degree 2, can have at most two roots, and at minimum, zero roots with no more than one turn. This extends to all even degree polynomials. That is to say, for even values of n, an nth degree polynomial can have a minimum of zero roots and a maximum of n roots, with at most n minus one turns. Let's carry this over to a new slide and look at an example. Here's our example. Find the minimum and maximum numbers of roots and the maximum number of turns of p of x, which is x to the six plus three x to the five, minus 5x cubed plus 7. Our first step is to determine the degree of p of x, which is the same as the highest exponent on the x variable, which is 6, an even number. So as we apply our conclusion from the last slide, our n is 6. We know that for even values of n, an nth degree polynomial can have a minimum of 0 roots and a maximum of n roots. Since in this example, n is 6, an even number, the minimum number of roots is 0, and the maximum number of roots is six. We also know that our even degree polynomial can have at most n minus one turns, where n is six. Since six minus one is five, the maximum number of turns is five. Okay, that's it for even degree polynomials. If you remember this statement, you'll be very well off. Now we're gonna look at odd degree polynomials and try to answer the same question. How many roots can a polynomial have? What's different about odd degree polynomials? For the purpose of this video, we'll look specifically at cubic functions and extend whatever conclusions we draw to all other odd degree functions. If you haven't seen a cubic function graphed yet, generally they look like this. They have a kind of S shape. So what are the possible numbers of roots a cubic could have? Because the two ends of cubic functions trend in opposite directions, one up and one down, as is the case with all odd degree functions, the plot will always cross the x-axis at least once. For example, look at this graph of y equals x cubed minus x plus 1. It has one root, since it must cross the x-axis at least once. If one of the turns of a cubic is just touching the x-axis, like in this graph of y equals 4x cubed minus 8x squared plus 4x, then the cubic will have two roots. Remember, we say that the plot is tangent to the x-axis at the singular point where the turn touches the axis. Finally, if the cubic has a turn on either side of the x-axis, like in this graph of y equals 3x cubed minus 3x minus 1, the plot will cross the x-axis at three points, resulting in the cubic having three roots. Notice that in these examples, all the cubics have no more than two turns. So a cubic, which is of degree three, can have at most three roots and at least one root with a maximum of two turns. Again, these observations extend to all odd degree polynomials. For odd values of n, an nth degree polynomial can have a minimum of one root and a maximum of n roots with at most n minus one turns. The only difference between this conclusion and what we found for even degree polynomials is that odd degree polynomials must have a minimum of one root rather than zero roots. Let's carry this conclusion to the next slide and see a quick example. Here's our example. Find the minimum and maximum numbers of roots and the maximum number of turns of p of x, which is x to the five plus two x to the four 
plus 6x cubed plus 7x minus 4. Our first step is to determine the degree of p of x, which is the same as the highest exponent on the x variable, which is 5, an odd number. So as we apply our conclusion from the last slide, our n is 5. We know that for odd values of n, an nth degree polynomial can have a minimum of one root and a maximum of n roots. So in this example, since n is 5, an odd number, the minimum number of roots is 1, and the maximum number of roots is 5. We also know that our odd degree polynomial can have at most n minus 1 turns, where n is 5. Since 5 minus 1 is 4, the maximum number of turns is 4. Okay, that's it for this video. Take a look at this summary graphic and make sure you feel comfortable before moving on.